Hey everybody, it's Shaniqua from What Shaniqua's Into and we are about to jump into some tarot cards to see what guidance spirit has for us in the collective this week. Today is Sunday, August 30th and um, this is the kickoff for Spiritual Sunday on my channel. After I do this tarot reading, I'm going to be doing four more for all of the zodiac sign element groups. So that's gonna be water, earth, fire, and air. Water signs are um, Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio. Earth signs are Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. Fire signs are Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. And air signs are Gemini, Libra, and Aquarius. If I sound a little bit quieter than I normally do, it's because my five-year-old is asleep on my bed, but I had to get the videos done. So I'm talking a little bit lower than I normally would, but hopefully you all will still be able to hear me just fine. So the spread that we're using for the collective reading this week is the normal energy challenge advice, know, remember, and consider. And the tarot deck that we are using is the Everyday Tarot by uh, Bridget Esselmont from biddytarot.com. And for the Zodiac readings, I'm also going to be pulling cards from the Personal Power Oracle card deck. You guys probably know by now, this is one of my favorite Oracle card decks. And then I'm also going to be pulling a card from the Yogic Path Oracle. Um, I don't think I've used this particular Oracle deck on my channel um, as of yet, so it'll be cool to jump into those cards and just kind of get some more detailed info for the Zodiac groups. So now that all of that is out of the way, let's go ahead and flip over the cards to see what we got. I've already shuffled and cut and pulled, but I like to flip the cards on camera to interpret them kind of with you guys. All right, so the energy for this week is the Four of Wands. Our challenge, oh no, is in the Three of Swords. That sucks. Four of Wands and Three of Swords. Oh man, I feel I feel heartbreak this week. Um, but our advice, oh wow, is found in the Ten of Wands. Ooh, difficult week in, as, as, in so far as the realm of pa passion and mind are concerned. But all right, uh, what do we need to know? We need to know a lesson from the Page of Cups. We need to remember something that we've learned from the Nine of Cups. <laughs> and we're asked to consider a lesson from the Queen of Swords. The overall context that these cards are talking about for the energy of this week for the collective is the Ten of Swords, so yay for that. And I think my little one's gonna wake up soon. And the deeper lesson being offered right now is found in the Eight of Pentacles. So the Four of Wands is about um, stable foundations for a long-term future. It's about a happy home. It's about accomplishment and connection. Um, and really it's about milestones, like crossing something, doing something, achieving something that marks something significant within your life. My little one's waking up and she looks mad at me. <laughs> um, and so as the energy of the week, um, many of us are probably gonna feel like it's prime time to make a big step forward or a declaration or um, like making something official, right? That's the overall energy and the theme that this week is bringing for us. But the challenge is found in the Three of Swords and the Three of Swords is understandably a card of heartbreak. Um, and it normally shows up when there is some information or truth or realization that um, pierces the heart that really just causes suffering in the emotional realm. But it starts from the realm of the mind, from the realm of like a conversation that you have or um, something that is not said that you need or want to hear. And um, it leaves us hurt. It leaves us trying to figure out what, what path 
um, we are on in our relationships and what truths we need to accept in order to heal. And the advice in doing so is to put down what you are carrying that is too much for you. The Ten of Wands is a card of um, something being near completion, but at the expense of you being burned out. Like you're, you're just carrying too much. The journey is, hi mama. The journey is basically complete. You're basically done, but you're trying to do too much yourself. You're trying to hold on to things that you need to let go of. So sometimes this comes up when we need to ask for help, when we need to um, allow someone else to like take over a project or a responsibility for us in order to make the things that we're doing more manageable. So this top row of the collective spread makes me think that for a lot of us this week, um, an accomplishment that we want to have, that many of us in the collective want to have in the realm of emotion and communication um, may clearly not be in the cards for us this week. We might have that realization that something we've been working toward or really, really want um, isn't the fit that we thought it was. And so then there's that realization that you have to decide and be okay with letting it go. And that's not always, sorry if you heard that, she's stretching. Um, and that's not always easy, especially when we think that we're on the path for real accomplishment and like harmony and happiness within our home lives. If that's the path that we think we're on and then life comes in and shows us that, you know, you didn't have this piece of information or you didn't see this aspect of the person or you were holding too tightly to this thing, then all the plans that we've laid, all the groundwork that we've laid is like almost all for naught besides the lessons that we learn from doing the work. So it's difficult when you realize that you need to let go of something or someone that you've been really longing for and like working on yourself and your actions and your environment in order to manifest but sometimes that's just how things are and normally i shouldn't even say normally like i choose to believe that whenever something that you really want that you've really been working toward ends up not being for you it's because there's something better there's something more in alignment with your path, your vibration, your perspective that um, can and will make its way into your life so long as there's space for it. So what you need to let go of this week is nine times out of 10, making space for something that's better for you in the long run. And we're asked to know that part of that manifestation is using your imagination and um, keeping your emotions on as high a vibration as you can. The Page of Cups is very imaginative and very youthful and playful and creative. And um, sometimes people see Page of Cups and think of like naivete or foolishness, um, but it's really connecting with intuition and creativity without fear or um, preconceptions to Sorry, my daughter just opened my door. Um, or with, without letting any of those like preconceived notions get in the way and block you from thinking about what is possible. So if you've been imagining some sort of milestone within a relationship or with a specific person, um, and this week brings up some sort of information or realization that confirms it's not actually good for you. The Page of Cups is asking us as a collective to just imagine something new, to imagine something um, that brings more fun and um, joy into our experience, into our lives, into our relationships. Um, because the Page of Cups is very, very intimately connected with their intuition so much so that like i said before it can almost come off as a very childlike energy um just because children in general are so 
intuitive and open with what they get from their intuition. And um, we're asked to know that we have those abilities this week. And we're asked to know that we can tap into them to help us feel better when things don't go how we want them to. And we're asked to remember in the Nine of Cups that fulfillment and emotional satisfaction should be had and cultivated and maintained from an internal place rather than an external one. Um, the previous card in the Eight of Cups is asking us to take an emotional spiritual journey right like if we if we think about the progression of the cups suit by the time we get to the nine we've sort of indulged and like dealt with distractions and fantasies in the seven of cups we realize that i'm trying to externalize my happiness and fulfillment and so we walk away from what we've built up in the eight of cups in order to reach the state of the nine of cups which is that satisfaction and fulfillment um, and and really just emotional contentment right on an individual level it's not about who's around you or what you have it's about you choosing to embody happiness and self-love and fulfillment so that you can then share it right um we don't want to like this falling in the remember position is really just enforcing for me that we don't want situations and people in our lives and around us that make us feel happy or make us feel good the ultimate goal is to cultivate those feelings within yourself for yourself so that you attract and manifest people and relationships that carry the same vibration carry the same energy and they can then mirror that back to you you don't want something external to be the source of your love your happiness your fulfillment you want to cultivate those things within yourself because they're always available always 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 so long as again you choose to believe that and make that the perspective that you live by then you've got unlimited you've got infinite abundant love and satisfaction and fulfillment and when you cultivate that you can then share it out to other people that have those as inside of them as well that they can then share with you you can't pour from an empty cup and in the nine of cups this week as a collective we're being asked to remember that we need to fill our own cup rather than asking someone else to pour into it and the consideration here found in the queen of swords um, is about delivering truth delivering some um, factual like logically based analysis not necessarily without regard to emotion um but almost in a way that supersedes emotion because with the queen of swords you know she's she's air and water right and her strength her suit is the sword suit the air suit um but as a queen she carries water so how does that mix the queen of swords represents someone who can use their experiences to cultivate wisdom and then deliver that wisdom to people that um, she's in a relationship with, or I shouldn't say in a relationship with, but um, like people in her life, right? It doesn't have to be a romantic connection, not at all. Um, it can be, but it's just anyone that this archetype has a lot of respect for. When I see Queen of Swords, I think delivering difficult truths not out of a sense of meanness but a sense of true respect it's it's that energy that says you might not want to hear this but you need to and because i respect you and your ability to handle difficult things i'm going to tell you this um so as the consideration this could be saying have a conversation with someone in your life who embodies that characteristic, someone who can be um, very to the point, um, possibly even blunt. People may even think of this person as being cold or harsh, because um, Queen of Swords can be mean, definitely can be. Um, but the consideration here is how can we receive and deliver um, difficult truths in a way that is meant to help us grow? right um because i just feel like we're in the collective especially seeing this this ten of wands here 
um, there's something that we need to let go of. Like, I feel like for many of us, it's a person or um, a fantasy of a person, an idea of a person. Um, and it's just holding us back as a collective. It's, it's wearing us down, burning us out, sapping our energy, and it needs to be released. It may be a very painful, difficult truth or realization to have, um, but in fact, it's actually a milestone that needs to be crossed, and then once the painful aspect is um, processed, then it needs to be celebrated as well, because again, when you clear out, when you release, when you let go of what is not helping you to move forward, you make space in your life for things to come in that do, okay? And contextually, um, Ten of Swords just says there's a way of thinking, a way of analyzing a perspective that we habitually filter things through that is not only blocking growth, but is, is like keeping you stagnant and possibly even um, making you go back, making you devolve. Um, because Ten of Swords is the card of I, I can't, I, I can't anymore, I can no longer. Even if I wanted to, I just don't have it in me. And it's not like a, a pouty, like I don't wanna kind of energy. It really is the understanding that this system, this framework that I've been filtering my thoughts and experiences through is harmful to me and I have to let it go. As much as I may have identified with it in the past, even if it's been actually helpful in the past, the only constant is change. And so there's regularly, cyclically going to be a time in every person's life when we have to discard and upgrade our ways of thinking. And that's what the 10 of swords indicates. And what we're learning overall, after talking about every other card in this spread, is what it takes to be consistent with something that truly brings you pride. Because Eight of Pentacles is about iterative work, a repetitive thing that builds on itself each time. And this is the card of finding joy in the journey rather than the destination, because all of the eights in the tarot have to do with like power and cycles and the pentacle suit is about physical resources lived experiences time health money home work that type of stuff so bringing all of that together in the eight of pentacles as the deeper lesson that the collective um, energy is offering for us this week is that if you're hammering out a pentacle and you realize it is not the quality that I'm trying to build, it is not the, it's not what I'm trying to put out in the world, it's not what I'm trying to manifest, it's not an um, invitation to just give up, it's more an invitation to upgrade how you're thinking about it in order to do better and actually manifest what you want. So for many of us, we may realize that someone or something that we've really wanted for a long time um, isn't in alignment with the consistent work that would be needed in order to actually make that accomplishment or cross that milestone, okay? So this week, just really pay attention to your desires, um, especially your desires in the realm of the heart and like long-term things. Pay attention to what you just unconsciously kind of always say, man, I wish, man, I want. And ask yourself if that's actually um, healthy or helpful to you, or if it's an externalization of emotions that you should be cultivating within yourself and for yourself in order to be able to share them in a healthy way. All right, so that is what I have for the collective this week. I sincerely hope that this reading was helpful. If you want more details, something that's more specific to you, make sure that you check out the reading for your Zodiac sign group. And if you would like a personal one-on-one -on -one reading, you can go to my website, writingwithtarot.com, and you can purchase a spread or use my contact me form to message me if you need anything clarified. Again, thank you guys so much for watching. Leave me some comments, tag some people, subscribe to my channel, 
and I will see you all in the next video. Bye.